we saw that the derivative of sine inverse of x, also called arc sine of x, is just 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. How about our other trig inverse functions? For example, we might want to calculate the derivative of tan inverse or arctan of x. We'll take a similar approach. We don't know how to find the derivative of tan inverse, but we can reimagine y equals tan inverse of x. We can reorder that to say it's, that's the same as tangent of y is equal to x. Then, using implicit differentiation, we take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. You get the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so secant squared of y times, by the chain rule, y prime is equal to the derivative of x, which is 1. Hence, my y prime, the derivative of tan inverse, is just 1 over secant squared of y. But what is secant squared of y? Construct a triangle that has as one of its angles y. Since tangent of y is equal to x, and you know tangent is opposite over adjacent in a right triangle, your opposite to adjacent ratio must be x to 1. x is just x over 1. So my opposite is x, my adjacent is 1. If I want to find the hypotenuse, I can use Pythagoras to say the, the length of the hypotenuse must be the square root of x squared plus 1 squared, the square root of x squared plus 1. And, and now I know, okay, what is y prime? y prime is 1 over secant squared of y. That's the same thing as cosine squared of y. But cosine is just adjacent over hypotenuse. So this should just come out to be whatever my adjacent side is. Adjacent side is 1. My hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus 1. That's cosine. So cosine squared will just be 1 over x squared plus 1. That is the derivative of tan inverse is just 1 over x squared plus 1. How about the other trig functions? Well, you can argue in a very similar way. You can find out that the derivative of cosine inverse or arc cosine of x comes out just to be negative what it is for sine. Negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. The derivative for cotangent is very much the same as, as what it is for tangent inverse. The derivative of cotangent inverse, or arc cotangent, just comes out to be negative what it is for tangent. Negative 1 over x squared plus 1. And as for secant, if I want to find the derivative of secant inverse of x, it comes out to be 1 over x, well, the x always has to be positive. If you run through the argument, you convince yourself that x has to be positive. So we'll put an absolute value around it. So if you put a negative, it'll come out positive. 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And for cosecant, it's exactly the same. The derivative of cosecant inverse is exactly the same as for secant inverse, except it's minus negative 1 over the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Of course, you can use these rules alongside your other ones. If, if you have like tangent inverse of e to the x, you would have to use your chain rule. So your derivative of tangent inverse of e to the x would just be 1 over e to the x squared plus 1 times the derivative of e to the x and so forth. So, so here we just have a new set of rules to, to add to your growing library of, of functions that you're able to calculate the derivative of.